Allah told us in the Quran, "Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut." Every self will taste death. At-Tahawi said, "Wa darab lahum ajala." He set death appointments for them. Allah destined the ajal, the time in which he creates death in a living creature, whether human, genie, or otherwise. Thus, when the appointed time of death comes, they cannot delay it for a single moment, nor can they advance it. As mentioned in the Qur'an, فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقُدِمُونَ When their death appointment comes, they cannot postpone for a moment, nor can they advance it. The scholars have differed about death. Is it an existence quality or a lack of life, a non-existent matter? Like how they talked about light and dark. Light is a body, but what about dark, darkness? Is it a substance that fills the space is, or is it merely the lack of light? The strong saying is that it's a substance that fills the space. It comes when the light vanishes. What about death? Is it merely a lack of life or is it an existence quality? What we learned is the strong saying is it's an existence quality. Those who said that it is existent took by what appears from the verse in Surah Al-Mulk, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةِ He it is who created death and life. And Nasafi said, وَالْمَوْتُ قَائِمٌ بِالْمَيْتِ مَخْلُوقٌ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى Death is something existent in the dead, a creation of Allah. Those who said that it is a lack, a non-existent matter, and we're not going to say thing, we're not going to say a non-existent thing, if we're going to say thing means something that exists. All of that talk, though, would be borrowed from the Arabic. They said, Shay is a thabitul mawjud, that with confirmed existence. Shay, which is thing or something. So if we treat the word thing in English like that, which is what I do, then we're not going to say a non-existent thing. So that's why the word matter is there or issue or etc. So those who said that death is a lack or a non-existent issue, they defined it. They said, indeed, death is the absence of life. According to that, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتِ He who created death means he who destined death. So that's the second saying. And Nasafi said, لَا سُنْعَ لِلْعَبْدِ فِيهِ تَخْلِيقًا وَلَكْتِسَابًا The slave has nothing to do with creating death or acquiring it. The slave has nothing to do with creating death or acquiring death. That's the creed of Ahl Sunnah. That's precise. Yes, 
a killer acquires the deed that causes death, such as stabbing. So he acquired the stabbing or burning or injuring and strangling. Murder, for example, is the slave's doing this act called murder. He acquired this act of strangling or burning, for example. As a result of it, Allah creates death in the living. So the person has no hand in creating the death. Death itself is not a creation of the slave, nor even a deed that he acquires. The death of the one he killed is not a deed that he acquired. Rather, the deed that he acquired is what led to the death. So think about it like stealing. If you stole and then a person became poor, then you neither created his poverty nor did you acquire his poverty. You didn't create his poverty and you didn't acquire his poverty. Rather, you acquired Yani, you performed what led to his poverty. So you don't create the death and you don't acquire the death. From this, it is known that the murdered person died at his appointed death time. Not before. The murdered person does not die before his appointed death time. The misguided Muantezila said the murdered person was cut off from his appointed time of death. And had he not been murdered, he would have lived until his appointed death time. Yani, he would have lived until his life expired. Therefore, he actually has two appointed death times. We answer, this is invalid. Because it does not befit Allah to say that he made an appointed death time for him, knowing that he would never live to that point. He would never meet the appointment. Or that he made his appointment one of two times. That's not befitting to say that he made the dead one, the murdered one's appointment one of two times like someone who does not know the outcome of matters. The proof against their claim is the aforementioned verse that they cannot postpone nor advance their appointments. Wa subhanallahi wa bihamdi. The barzakh, life in the grave. It is obligatory to believe in the barzakh, the barrier, the life in the grave. Allah said about it, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Whoever turns away from believing in me, he shall have a hard life. That's the life in the grave. The return of the soul to some or all of the body in the grave, as well as the restoration of the mind and the senses, were confirmed in the authentic narrations. Yani, you will be alive in your grave. Like in the hadith from Abdullah bin Amr, when the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentioned the two who come with the trial of the grave. The trial of the grave. Such an appropriate word there. That's probably is the best there. The trial of the grave. The questioning of the grave. But yeah, like a trial. And the word in Arabic is the fitna. Fitna. But the fitna here means the test. That's the meaning of fitna in the language. The meaning of fitna in the language is ikhtibar, the test, the trial, 
the questioning of the grave. The two who come with the trial of the grave. Ya yeah, Allah. Umar ibn al-Khattab said, Will our minds be returned to us, O Messenger of Allah? He said, Naam kahayatikumul yawm. Yes, like you are now. Abdullah bin Amr said, Then he was speechless, as if he had a stone in his mouth. Yani, he said, He had a stone in his mouth. So that was a figure of speech. Another is the hadith of Ibn Abbas elevated up to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ يَمُرُّ بِقَبْرِ أَخِيهِ الْمُؤْمِنِ كَانَ يَعْرِفُهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَيُسَلِّمُ عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا عَرَفَهُ وَرَدَّ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ there is no one who passes by the grave of his believing brother whom he knew in the dunya and then passes the salam to him but that dead one would know him and return his salam. There is also the confirmation of sleep in what was narrated from Abu Hurairah that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِذَا كُبِرَ الْمَيْتُ أَوْ الْإِنسَانِ أَتَاهُ مَلَكَانِ أَسْوَدَانِ أَزْرَقَانِ يُقَالُ لِأَحَدِهِمَا مُنْكَرٌ وَلِلْآخَرِ نَكِيرٌ When the dead or the person is buried, when the dead or the person is buried, two blue-black angels come to him. That means very dark blue almost black. One of them is called Munkar and the other is called Nakir. فَيَكُولَانِ لَهُ مَا كُنْتَ تَكُولُ فِي هَذَا الرَّجُلِ مُحَمَّدٍ فَهُوَ قَائِلٌ مَا كَانَ يَكُولُ They say to him, what did you used to say about this man Muhammad? Then he will say what he used to say. فَإِنْ كَانَ مُؤْمِنًا قَالْ هُوَ عَبِدُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبِدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ If he were a believer, he would say, He is the slave of Allah and his messenger. I testify that no one is God but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. فَيَقُولَانِ لَهُ إِن كُنَّا لَنَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ لَتَقُولُ ذَلِكَ ثُمَّ يُفْسَحُ لَهُ فِي قَبْرِهِ سَبْعِينَ ذِرَاعًا فِي سَبْعِينَ ذِرَاعًا وَيُنَوَّرُ لَهُ فِيهِ فَيُقَالُ لَهُ نَمْ فَيَنَامُ كَنَوْمِ الْعَرُوسِ الَّذِي لَا يُقِفُهُ إِلَّا إِلَّا أَحَبُّ أَهْلِهِ حَتَّى يَبْعَثَهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ مَرْجَعِهِ ذَلِكِ Then they say to him, Certainly, we surely knew that you would say that. Then his grave is widened for him 70 cubits by 70 cubits. And it will be lit for him. And it will be said to him, Sleep. Then he will sleep the sleep of a newlywed who is not awakened but by his most beloved wife until Allah resurrects him from that bed of his. That doesn't mean, though, that his body doesn't decay. It means his body will decay, usually, and then if he died as a believer, his soul will go up without going into details. If he died as a kafir, his soul will go down to Sijin, his soul will be tortured there. If he died as a pious believer, his soul goes to Illi Yun, and the soul will enjoy there. And there's just going to be a little piece of the spine left in the earth, not less than that. That will never go away. And then, on Judgment Day, he will be recreated and come out of his grave. 
So that's the meaning of Hatta Yabahu Allahu Mimabjahi Dalik until Allah resurrects him from that bed of his. Fa in kana munafi kan call and if he were a hypocrite, he says in shock, La Adri Kuntu Asma Unasa Yakuluna Shayan Fakuntu Akulu. I don't know. I used to hear the people saying something, so I used to say it. Fayakulani la in kunna la na'lamu an nakatakulu dalik. Fumma yukalu lil arudil ta'imi. فَتَلْتَئِمُ عَلَيْهِ حَتَّى تَخْتَلِفَ أَضْلَاعُهُ Then they will say to him, Certainly we knew you would say that. Then it would be said to the earth, Close! Then it will close on him until his ribs crisscross. فَلَا يَزَالُ مُعَذَّبًا حَتَّى يَبْعَثَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مِنْ مَرْجَعِهِ ذَلِكَ and he will not cease to be tortured until Allah resurrects him from that bed of his. This is why the Shaykh says that whoever says that animals do not have souls, like Muhammad Mutawalli al-Sha'rawi, commits blasphemy. Yani Shaykh considers that all of what's been presented, and more than that, of course, is evidence that denying that animals have souls is blasphemy. It is a contradiction of the Qur'an and denial of what is observed. What is observed, which is that they're alive, those animals, like the humans are alive by a soul. And the genies are alive by a soul. And the angels are alive by a soul. Allah said, وَإِذَا الْوُحُوشُ حُشِرَتْ and when the beasts are resurrected and gathered, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَتُؤَدُّنَّ الْحُقُوقَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حَتَّى يُقَادَ لِلشَّاتِ الْجَلْحَاءِ مِنَ الشَّاتِ الْقَرْنَاءِ By God, the rights will indeed be fulfilled for those who deserve them on Judgment Day, they will even be given to the hornless sheep who is butted from the horned sheep who butted. The meaning is that they must have souls because they lived, died, and came back to life. Yani, they will come back to life. But subhanallah wa bihamdi. The enjoyment and torture of the grave. Al-Tahawi said, وَالْقَبْرُ رَوْضَةٌ مِّن رِّيَاطِ الْجَنَّةِ أَوْ حُفْرَةٌ مِّن حُفَرِ النِّيرَانِ The grave is a garden among the gardens of paradise or a ditch among the ditches of hell. Whoever denies the torture of the grave blasphemes for opposing the saying of Allah the fire will be displayed to them in their graves morning and afternoon. Then, O oh angels, the day the hour commences, commit the people of Pharaoh to the most excruciating of torture. So that's evidence for the torture of the grave because of the mentioning of Judgment Day later. Also evidence for it is the saying of Allah, <laughs> Due to the sins of the people of Noah, they were drowned then immediately were put into a fire after their deaths. That's how we learned the tafsir of this ayah. And this nar, in this ayah, is not the fire of hell. We learned that the fat 
in this ayah is for immediateness. For their sins, they were drowned. And then immediately put into a fire. It was narrated in a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ passed by two new graves and said, إِنَّهُمَا لَيُعَذَّبَانِ وَمَا يُعَذَّبَانِ فِي كَبِيرٍ أَمَّا أَحَدُهُمَا فَإِنَّهُ كَانَ لَا يَسْتَنْزِهُ مِنَ الْبَوْلِ وَالْآخَرُ You can check that and make sure that Amma is not missing there. I was expecting it to say, That's not familiar to me. But I don't think that the hadith is perverted here. So we can check it, inshallah. Surely they are certainly being tortured. And would they be tortured for an enormity? Indeed, they would. One of them used to not clear himself from urine, and the other used to be a tail-bearer, an instigator going between people to make trouble. It is not obligatory to know exactly how that torture happens. It is for the blasphemers and some Muslim major sinners who died before repentance. Yani, the death caught them before they repented. Even some pious ones, it was reported about them. All of them were pious. They want to pray in jama'ah. So it was said to one of them, lead the prayer. And you know how they do. No, you lead the prayer. No, you lead the prayer. So the one of them said, I'll lead the prayer next time. So the other one said, you expect to live until your next prayer? That's how the pious people are. It was reported about one man that, yani, someone said that, he was in the presence of a man with his wife. So the man came and he said to his wife while that person was there, if I die today, then do this and do this and make sure this is like this, etc. And then he left. So that one said, what, what is that? Is something wrong? She said, no, he does that every day. SubhanAllah. Uh, so, it is not obligatory to know exactly how that torture happens. It is for the blasphemers and some Muslim major sinners who died before repentance. Allah will pardon the other major sinners, then their torture will stop, and the rest will be delayed until the hereafter, if Allah does not forgive them. This enjoyment and punishment in the grave will be as long as the body has not decayed. If the body decayed entirely and nothing was left except the piece of the tailbone, the soul of the pious believer will go to paradise. Malik narrated in his Muwatta as well as Ahmed and an nasai with a Hassan chain of narration from the route of Ka'b ibn Malik, إنما نسمة المؤمن طائر يعلق في شجر الجنة حتى يرجعه الله إلى جسده يوم يبعث. The soul of the believer would be but the shape of a bird perching in the trees of paradise until Allah returns him to his body on the day he is resurrected. Ahmed and Al Tabarani narrated with a Hassan chain from Um Hani that she asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we die, will we visit each other and will someone see another? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, تَكُونُ النَّسَمُ طَيْرًا تَعْلُقُ بِالشَّجَرْ حَتَّى إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ دَخَلَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ فِي جَسَدِهَا the souls will be shaped like birds perching from trees until the advent of Judgment Day. Then every soul will enter its body. The souls of believing major sinners who died without repentance will be between the sky and the earth. And some will be in the first sky. 
The souls of the blasphemers will be in Sijin, and that is a place in the lowest earth, according to our Sheikh. Some said Sijin is in hell. The lowest earth is above hell. As for the martyrs, their souls ascend immediately to paradise. Wa subhanallahi wa bihamdihi.